It's a crucial weekend for Inter Milan and Real Madrid after midweek exertions as they take on Juventus and Barcelona. Great games we have this weekend. Welcome to the Not Megan Guardian TV. My name is Solomon Fowe and John Amoma joins us in the studios today. It's great to have you in the show. I'm so glad to be here. Thank yeah, you. absolutely. So, now, the big one coming into this show was the fact that, yes, our guy... FC, yeah. Or Jerry Gallo, yes, he scored in that game against them um, for Manchester United in that in that particular Europa League game. So um, now we're looking at the fact that okay, he has gotten his goal, he has gotten off the mark. Do you expect to see a whole lot more goals from Jerry Gallo? Um, yeah, I do expect that. Like, come on, it was such a joyous occasion for Nigerians, especially like. Man, this is huge. Like, this is the first Nigerian team for Manchester United. Exactly. Like, a man coming from the shadows, from, from the lowest part of society and all, and achieving a lifelong dream. So, him scoring was a thing of joy for everyone of us. Now, I would like to temper my expectations. Like, okay, I know it's not the first, um, it's not, it's not the guy you see on the first team shit. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so, Marshall still plays nine. Even the Rashford is injured, but we know he's going to get more chances and all. Exactly. So I expect he would, you know, Take, take all of those chances and probably put in more goals. But at the same time, I'm, like I said, I'm going to temper my expectations. So it was quite a couple of more goals, I guess. But I don't expect it to be prolific. Okay. Yeah. Do, 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 do you think it's, it's, it's a good fit for Manchester United? Yeah, it is. Like, he is, he is actually. He is actually. Like, he's all up in his minds. He does some very. He brings some amazing qualities to the team. Mm. Yeah. So um, I, I think he's going to have a real chance. Marshall is only recognizing nine right mm. now. Rashford is out injured. Yeah, true. So he should have more chances and I think his style should do still perfectly with the whole team. Exactly. I think a whole lot of people like the fact that there is a, a whole lot more physicality when it comes to exactly. the attack of Manchester United. Exactly. And... Yeah. So, so moving to that, the big game this weekend, that's Real Madrid against Barcelona at Santiago Bernabéu. Yeah. And it's coming at a very crucial time for Real Madrid because they just lost during the midweek to Manchester City and mm. their season go fall apart this weekend so when they play against Barcelona. Now, yeah. the history books and the form books seriously does not favour Real Madrid, but do you see them putting any sort of surprise in that particular fixture? I'll, I'll hit the nail on the head here. I don't think, I think they are poor from team to continue. Baka will just make things worse for them. Mm. Baka is exceptional right now. I'll, rec I'll readily acknowledge that. But everyone knows the Bernabeu is almost Baka's like second home ground, mm. like they get to win there consistently. I think back even a lot more comfortable playing at Benavu than the Camp Nou. And many Real Madrid fans will like you saying that. I, I know, but I'm so sure many of them fine. They might not really like it, but deep down they know they are scared. And when it comes to drive rival, I'll be honest anyway. Um, right, um, your previous form and everything doesn't really play a role. It's the biggest driver in the Yeah, true. So everybody's amped up. Everybody's intensity is high. Ambitions is high. So like. Everybody ready to give him their whole, but I, I see back on making this. And it's going to be, and it's just going to be terrible for Madrid because they've, they're almost out of the Champions League. Mm. They don't need to say they are out. They could spring up a miracle at the Etihad, but they are almost out. I don't, I don't see Guardiola losing this one. And if they get to lose this game this weekend, they'll be five points behind. Mm. And that's going to be huge. That's like their only chance they see while this is in the out of the Copa del Rey. They're like halfway out of the Champions League. So losing this weekend, uh, I don't know, it's my begin to roll. Zidane, Zidane was looking a bit comfortable three weeks ago. Mm -hmm. Well, no, I don't know. I don't know. Perez probably just looking out for a new manager or something. Maybe I'm exaggerating, but I just feel Madrid, they're, they're in trouble. Okay, now, now the injury to Eden Hazard, how much has it really affected this Real Madrid side? You know, you, you see the fact that he wasn't able to feature so much this season yeah. and also at these sort of crucial moments, they are not able to call on probably their most um, important player this time. Yeah. It's coming at a period that Vinicius Jr. has not, has been, um, has not been as imposing as you expect him to be. Sure. Benzema has been great, but um, a couple of other players that really add to the mix are, are, are not really giving up to scratch when it comes to their contribution to the, to the whole collective. Now, do you think it's, it's, it's a problem of, of personnel uh, for the Real Madrid side, seeing that they've lost to Levante, that was last week, when they were on top of the, um, that's the La Liga, and also this week, after going 1-0 up, you know, seeing them drop down to 2-1 against um, Manchester City. Is it is it a personnel problem at Real Madrid? I, I highly doubt that. That's a start for the squad. Come on, look at the guys they have on the bench. At the, for the past two, three games, Rodrigo has been in Team B. Mm. Doesn't even make the match this squad. And that's a quality young talent. So, 
Um, they have, I think they have fantastic players. Part of just that part of the season where, like, where I don't know, maybe the confidence has dropped. Or, I don't, but I think personally wise, they are almost perfect. I think they even have a bigger squad compared to Bata. You, you see Bata's been. Yeah, with the injuries too. Exactly. So I think they have way superior players. Like, there are times when even Mojin doesn't make the first team squad. Yeah. Doesn't make the first 11. So, I don't know. I think it's just a combination of um, probably poor form, probably low confidence. Um, probably wrong tactics too from Zidane because like against Man City, people, a lot of people criticised them taking out Vinicius. I felt their biggest offensive threat was was taken off yeah. and it's took okay with the firepower and all. So I think it's personal wise, yeah, 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 actually great. That's mm-hmm. one of the best scores in Europe. But I just think against Barcelona, uh, I don't fancy their chances. Okay. I'm open to a surprise. And they, they might probably just spring up one because right now their backs are against the wall. Mm-hmm. You know, the La Liga remains their biggest and best chance for a silver win. So I expect them to give in their all and try to remedy things. But ultimately, I, right. I don't see them coming up top. All right, I hear you. But, but I also heard the fact that you said that Barcelona themselves are not really as great as you expect them to be. Sure. You know, we saw Messi score four goals. That was last weekend. And in the midweek also, we saw that they had to do a whole lot for them to get a yeah. joint up at the fixture against Napoli. We don't know what happens that the camp in the second leg, yeah, but that was a sort of game that you would expect Barcelona to really um, take or to win that particular fixture, and they couldn't win that that, sure. that match. Uh, they've had a couple of injuries, and they are heavily dependent on Lionel Messi mm-hmm. in that particular um, team. And you could also argue that if not taken to um, their coaches' methods as, as much as you would want them to. So do, do you think this Barcelona side are as menacing as I mean, a whole lot of people put them out to be? Especially against Real Madrid heading into that game. I, I agree. Barcelona are not, they're not. This is not the exceptional Barcelona side we know. They are struggling. They've lost so many games this season, and the Messi dependence is is is, is like at its highest point right now. Mm. Like, man actually needs the charts in both scoring and assists and making of assists. So the dependence is just insane. And if it doesn't come to the party, we know Barcelona are in trouble. So I don't know exception, I agree. And they're still finding time to like come to terms with the new manager's tactics and all and everything. But still, like nevertheless, I I, I expect Bakati like this. Okay. Probably it's my sentiment playing. Well, I, I think you're sewn up with, with Barcelona winning this. And, and yeah, a whole lot of people actually, agree with you. I think it's a logical thing to do to see that Barcelona really look as if they're the better side in this particular picture. But we're going to another game um, that is going to be happening this weekend, a very important one at that in the Italian Serie A. That's Juventus against Inter Milan. Mm-hmm. First against third. You know, at the beginning of the season, especially after a couple of games in, we thought Inter Milan were going to be the ones to upset the Apple Cats when it comes to Juventus' um, um, dominance on the Italians yeah. really are. but it seems as if they're out of fraud, they're out of gas, especially with um, um, Antonio Conte's um, exertions on, on, on the players themselves. You know, they brought in fresh faces in January, but all of these things, how does it play out in that particular picture, seeing that Inter Milan are not having even the greatest form at this point, True. and they're even down toward six points behind Juventus. Six points, and that's huge. So, in Juventus victory would extend to nine points, that's, that's a whole lot. So I feel that would be like their biggest drive right now. They know losing is probably going to spoil the hand mm. in their title campaign. So I feel they're going to give it their whole. Like rightly pointed out, they've been pretty much inconsistent. After the high of um, beating AC Milan, yeah, uh, then two goes down, and the next game again, they went and surprisingly they flopped. So it's not been so, it's not been a very consistent season for them. But you don't have to look at this. This is their first real push for the title in a very long while. Okay. So. I think that we should call them some slack. Okay. So the whole consistency stuff comes. I think next season will get them well prepared and better and everything. Because this is Juventus they are facing. The team yeah, has won the last six, seven scudettes. Okay. So um, it's going to be a tough ask for them. It's going to be a tough ask for them. But ultimately, I still see the experience of Juventus. Um, Even after they lost to Leon? Yeah. Uh, that's an impossible situation. They lost a way despite lots of effort and everything. We just, I think they were just unlucky. Yeah, okay. and I expect them to get the job done in the, in the next fixture. So, yeah. if you are going to make a prediction, Juventus against the Inter Milan, what would it be? To make close one, well, I think Juventus should make this. Okay, thank you so much for talking to us on the Nutmeg today. Yeah, my pleasure.
They are absolutely incredible games on show this weekend. Inclusive is the Carabao Cup between Manchester City and Aston Villa. So let me know in the comment section what game you're going to be watching and what games you think will be the best this weekend. That's all we can take on the show today. Um, this has been the Nutmeg. And if you're not subscribed to this YouTube channel, you should absolutely do that. Awesome content. My name is Solomon Fowe and thank you so much for watching.